Hello and welcome to the fourth video in the Basic ECL Concepts video series. In this video we will discuss datasets and indexes. In ECL these are separate physical file types. The HPCC technology only uses old-fashioned ISAM files, that's indexed sequential access method. So you must not think that anything is ever done for you automatically. This is not an RDBMS. That's why we need to talk about data sets, which are simply data files of any supported type, and indexes, which are search key files containing record pointers to allow random access to individual records in data sets. The record structure defines the layout of the fields in a data set. It begins with the keyword record and ends with the keyword end. In between are as many field definitions as are needed to fully define the layout of the file. Note that curly braces are lexical equivalents of the words record and end. Their purpose is to allow you to define a record structure within the function that uses it instead of creating a separate definition. As you can see here, both of these outputs have a second parameter specifying the result fields to display. The first uses a separate record structure definition, while the second uses the curly braces to define the display field within the output action. Both produce the same result. Simply specify the data type and the name of each field in the file. The order of the fields must be the same order as contained in the dataset. The dataset declaration defines a data file for use in your subsequent ECL code. Data files are either created in the HPCC environment by using the output action to write data to disk or have been sprayed in from the outside world. The first parameter to dataset is always a string constant that contains the logical file name, as it is known to the HPCC's distributed file utility, the DFU. All datasets in an HPCC are distributed, with a single physical part on each node, but all the physical parts together comprise a single logical file. It is the DFU's job to keep track of where all the data resides. Your job is to work with the single logical file no matter how many physical parts it has. The second parameter to data set is the field layout, usually defined in a separate record structure, but it may also be defined in line. The keywords flat, CSV, and XML specify the type of data file. Flat, or its synonym Thor, specifies a flat file format. This usually means fixed width records, but variable length records are also supported. CSV specifies a delimited file format. CSV, of course, means comma separated values, but ECL does support any kind of field and record delimiters for this file type. XML specifies an XML data file. This is most commonly used for well formed XML files. ECL does not use DTDs to define its XML, but the record structure documentation in the language reference describes the XPath support that we do have. Depending on how squirrely your XML data is, we have several ways to deal with it in ECL in addition to a simple XML dataset declaration. This is a typical dataset declaration code. A record structure defining the layout of the fields and a dataset declaration provided the name for your ECL code to use to work with the data in the file. As you can see in this example code, the file name string contains a leading tilde. We'll discuss what that means in a couple more slides. One other type of dataset declaration is worth bringing to your attention. This is an inline dataset. The first parameter is a set, notice the square brackets that delimit an ECL set, of records. Notice the curly braces around each set element. Curly braces mean record and end. The second parameter names the record structure that defines the field layout. Inline datasets are used throughout the ECL documentation to provide fully functional example code. 
They are also very useful for testing and debugging code before running it against production data sets. An index declares that an index file exists on disk. Indexes are always created in the HPCC environment by the build action. The first parameter to index names the data set that you're indexing into. The second parameter is the field layout of the index. The leading fields are always the search terms that will be used to identify the specific records to retrieve from the base data set. And the last field is always the record pointer that identifies the relative byte position within the data set of the beginning of the record to retrieve. In this example code, you can see the data set declaration, which contains as its last field the virtual file position field that declares the internal record pointer for use by the index. The index declaration's record structure begins with the search fields, and the record, point, record pointer field is last. And this fetch operation will retrieve specific records from the data set by using the index to achieve random access to the records and return only the requested ones. The leading tilde contained in the file name strings for both data set and index declarations is an indicator to the DFU that the default file scope name has been overridden. Each HPCC cluster has its own default scope name, which the DFU will automatically prepend to any file name it's given if that tilde is absent. As a practical matter, most file names do override the default scope and therefore require the use of that leading tilde. Datasets and record sets are functionally interchangeable terms in ECL. The only distinction between them is a dataset is a physical file on disk or in memory, while a record set is a set of data records from a data set, usually a subset of, the rec of those records after a filter condition has been applied. Record filters in ECL are simply logical expressions within parentheses attached to the data set or record set name wherever it appears in your ECL code that specify the condition that qualifies a record to be included in the result set. This is exactly the same as a WHERE clause in SQL. You may have multiple filter conditions separated by commas. All filter expressions must be true in order for a record to be included in the result set. You may use the same string slicing syntax that was discussed in uh, the last video on your record sets to identify a specific record. And you can combine this with a standard dataset.field syntax to address a specific field from a specific record. OK, let's briefly restate the things we've just gone over. One, a record structure defines the field layout of a file. Two, a dataset declaration defines the reference to a data file in your ECL cone. Three, an index declaration defines an ISAM index into your data files to allow random access to records. Four, data sets and record sets are functionally equivalent. Five, record filters in ECL are the same as SQL where clauses. This concludes this video. Thank you.